Hello and welcome to our online service for this, the ninth Sunday after Trinity. We had a baptism at St Mark's this morning and Mike was the baptizer and also the preacher at that service and you're going to be hearing his sermon in a minute's time. John Aston did the prayers of intercession and you're going to hear those too, followed by a piece from our choir. I wasn't at St Mark's this morning, I was in Albury helping with their service there, but nevertheless I'm going to do the reading for you online now, and it comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather, leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak and may we hear in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At a service of baptism, symbols of the Christian faith are very much in evidence. The cross is the ultimate symbol of our faith. It's a sign of hope, not of defeat. Lit candles signify the light of Christ and water. The water of baptism, representing the spiritual cleansing given through faith in Jesus Christ. And it's water that I particularly want to consider now. For us in the UK we can take clean water very much for granted. Well, most of the time. Droughts in recent years have perhaps reminded us that it is a limited resource. And equally, the weather of the last uh, week or two have reminded us that rain can fall and fall in plenteous quantities. Equally, being aware of the outrageous contamination of our rivers by the companies responsible for providing clean water perhaps stirs us to anger and a raised awareness of the precious gift God has given us. I emphasise the word gift. Apparently, water is mentioned some 722 times in the Bible. That's more often than faith, hope, prayer or worship. If you open the Bible, even from the very first chapter, you will read concerning creation of the earth in Genesis chapter 1 and at verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Water, as such an essential component of life, was there on the very first day. Yet again, turning to the last book of the Bible, Revelations, and almost the last words 
We read in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 17. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Water flows through the scriptures, and this should remind us of its importance, both spiritually and physically. In the days when Jesus was alive, water was a most precious commodity. It had to be carried from wells, from the river. It was a sign of great friendship to, uh, and acceptance to offer water offering water particularly to guests to wash their feet, especially as they entered your house from the dusty conditions outside. The water of baptism is also very precious. We have it purely as a result of Jesus living the life that he did, and of him being willing to give up his life to show the extent of his love, of his Father's love, for us. We use it freely today to show Jesus' love and acceptance of Jacob and his desire for Jacob to become his friend and follower for the rest of his life. Jesus, the source of living water, extends an invitation to all who thirst. Dear friends, please permit the words said and sung and the promises made today to act as living water on your soul. Permit Almighty God by his Holy Spirit to speak into your life. Indeed today is Jacob's day. It can be yours as well. Jacob is being baptised, being baptised into the Church of God. But for you, that baptism may or may not be something in your life's history, but a relationship with God is open to all. Water is also the way we wash ourselves clean. It's very difficult to get clean without water. The water of baptism symbolises our deeper inner cleansing by God in the power of his Spirit. And as Jacob grows into adulthood, God offers daily to wash away his failures. This means he can bring his failings to God with sorrow, but in confidence, knowing of God's cleansing forgiveness. Friends, please never take baptism for granted. The water we use here today is very precious. It is a sign of the love Jesus has for baby Jacob. It's a sign of the love Jesus has for each one of us. It is a sign of inner cleansing so that Jacob and all of us may seek forgiveness. Forgiveness for our failings and never to be separated from the love of God found in Christ Jesus. Amen. To start our prayers today with a time for silence as we compend somebody known to us that needs God's help. I am listening to what the Lord God is saying and he promises peace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. On this day, O Lord, we pray for Jacob as he comes to us for baptism. We welcome him as a young member of our church and we ask for God's blessing on him now and for the rest of his life. And we ask for God's blessing on his parents and godparents. Lord, walk with them and be with them 
all their days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. Heavenly Father, whose only son was baptised by John the Baptist in the Jordan, called all children to him. We pray for boys and girls everywhere and that their childhood should be full of laughter and happiness as they learn the many facts of life. May God enjoy and provide them with many experiences and may they learn of your love and learn to see and serve Jesus, our Master, Saviour and Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, through your grace we are your people. Through your Son you have redeemed us. In your Spirit you have made us your own. We pray for our church, for our parish, and for our ministry team, and for Paul Davis as he prepares to come, our new Bishop of Dorking. Make our hearts respond to your love. Lord, receive thy praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time, O oh Lord, we pray for the sick and for those in need. We pray for the elderly and those who are alone at this time. We give thanks for our carers and for the love and support that they give. Make our wills eager to obey and our hands ready to heal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you, O Lord, the faith of departed, especially those known to us and those whose anniversary it is. We give thanks for the life of Dick Collins, who served this community for over 50 years. And we pray for those who mourn, and we ask for a blessing on Elaine and her family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers in the name of St Mark and St James. Amen. Amen. 